Thank you, lady. The, the European Union has been praised since February 24th, as has Bogdan Klitsch once again reiterated here on stage, that it has presented a unified front, that it has been able to act swiftly. Um, give us a sense of the discussions as much as you can from behind the doors, of course, to bring 27 nations together at a time like this and speak with one voice could cannot be easy and could not have been easy. Uh, I know you're working at, at that front very diligently together with the high representative. Um, is the unified front of substance or do we see cracks in it already? No, I think that the level of consensus in Europe is uh, extraordinarily high, extraordinarily high. And uh, just to give you an example, uh, it took two months, only two months, to set up the military mission uh, to Ukraine. Whereas usually when we send missions to Africa, uh, it takes uh, one year or 18 months. But if you allow me, if uh, I would like to make a certain comment regarding the meaning of this conflict. Because if we don't concentrate and analyze the meaning of this conflict, I'm afraid that we're not going to be able to think about the, re the, the question we raise, which is the way out, okay? So if you allow me, I will make a few remarks. First, in terms of global meaning, this war fundamentally, fundamentally marks the second death of the Soviet Union. This is for me the most important uh, provisional conclusion. So, in terms of meaning, this war, and we have to recall it, is a war of aggression conducted by a permanent member of the Security Council against an independent and sovereign state which the Russia was supposed to guarantee the security, the integrity, including, including Crimea through the Budapest Memorandum of 1994, which carried a, a risk for Ukraine because in exchange of this, it relinquished its nuclear equipment. So the cost for Ukraine was extremely high. And since we are in an Arab country, in the Gulf, the best comparison is the invasion of Kuwait by uh, Saddam Hussein in 1991. Uh, now, second, the rationale of the war. Why put in wage that war. You need to read what Putin said. And he wrote a very interesting piece written in July 2021, which actually other Russians could have written. For example, Solzhenitsyn, of course, with much more talent, which means that the Ukrainian problem is not the simply a Putin problem. It would be a deep mistake. It's a Russian problem. And what Putin said is extremely clear. He said that Ukraine should not exist because Russia, Ukraine, Belarus belong to the same ensemble. <coughs> they are the same nation. And as you know, the Russians call the Ukrainian the little Russians and they call the Belarus people the white Russians. So in his mind, in his mind, they are part of the same nation because this is part of an imperial vision of the Russian world. Now, the question you could raise is, why did he wait 2022 to wage this terrible war, which fortunately, which fortunately, went miserably for the Russian army. The date, the chronology of the war, it had been launched 
on February 24th. And the day before the invasion, he made a declaration in which he said that Russia will support, recognize and support militarily the two puppet governments of the east of Ukraine. And, and I am amazed to see that nobody knows why he made this statement on the 23rd of February. And I raise the question to all audience here. Could you tell me why this declaration had been made on the 23rd of February? So I'm go going to give you the answer because even the ministers of uh, foreign affairs, Europeans, were not aware of this coincidence. And it, it gives you an idea of the meaning of the war. The 23rd of February refers to the 8th anniversary of the fall of the pro-Russian regime in Ukraine. The day Yukashenko uh, left Ukraine. Yanukovych. And Yanukovych. Yanukovych. And the day after, it was the beginning of the democratic process. So, uh, the question is often raised, okay, they, they didn't accept the independence of Ukraine, but what did they wait 2022? Here again, the explanation is quite simple. As long as the political trajectory of Ukraine was compatible with the nature of the Russian regime, it was possible for Russia to manage the situation as they manage the situation in Belarus, okay? But since 2014, the political trajectory of Ukraine became very different, far from the Russian evolution. And then started the danger to which Russia answered through the annexation of Crimea and launched the famous green man in uh, the east of, of, uh, of Ukraine. So that is the reason why he launched this, uh, 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 this war. So on our side, on our side, did we make mistakes? Yes, we made a lot of mistakes. And let me mention those mistakes. Sorry to give this background, but without this background, we cannot have a serious discussion on Ukraine. The first is, and in my view, and I, by, by, by the way, I'm expressing here myself on a personal basis, not reflecting the views of the HIVP. So please do not quote me in a way or another. So first, we didn't have, we never had a Ukrainian policy. Our Ukrainian policy was a byproduct of our Russian policy. And it led to a certain number of uncertainty, to a certain number of mistakes, hesitations, including the question of uh, NATO, I mean, to which personally I'm not favorable in the case of uh, Ukraine, but we didn't give right and clear, precise indication. The second and big mistake is that we didn't react to the occupation of Crimea, which I remind is part of Ukraine, because even after the re during the referendum of independence, 54% of the population of Crimea voted for the independence. Of course, the figure was much, much lower than the other regions of Russia, of Ukraine, but still the majority was favorable. So we didn't react. And, and, and the worst is that the sanction against Russia after Crimea didn't come after the occupation of Crimea, but after the shutting down of the, the plane. Third, I will be brief on this, the terrible mistake we made was to increase our dependency on energy, 
on Russia right. after Crimea, yeah. after Crimea. And of course, we can fully understand the reasoning of Mr. Putin, who says that those Europeans are not uh, uh, reacting swiftly. And I think that one of, I mean, he virtually made after that all the mistakes possible, but he underestimated the role of the United States. But just, and, and I will just uh, finish on this, uh, and I hope that we will be able to come on the way out. Uh, the, the commitment of the EU is dramatically underestimated. I'm virtually sure that, ma that the majority here of the, the attendance believe that the American support is more important than the European one. It's false. The last figure published by the Keele Institute at the end come to the point to s and said that the, uh, co the commitments of the European Union on the economic side and the military one are superior to the commitment of the United States. Right. Sorry. Well, well, thank you so much. I mean, obviously, this uh, was a, the, the background, the historical background that you provided, cer certainly key here. Um, and, and the last point about the Europeans actually stepping up to the plates uh, and uh, their aid having uh, at least equal equal weight as far as Washington's contribution is concerned is, is taken, uh, is well noted here. We have 45 minutes uh, left in this discussion, certainly. Um, I, I do want to go through uh, one more round and take some questions from the audience members. <laughs>